Yeah. Uh, Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Tuesday, May the 10th. Year's 2022. Let's talk trading. Risk part six with Walmart. As always, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and differ from Walmart's. And just so we're on the pay, same page here, you know, risk management. Let's not lose any more than we're willing to lose on any one singular trade. So, Walmart, today, I want to ask you, what do you think is the most riskiest thing a trader can do? I know you'll, I said let's not state the obvious, but let's go ahead and state the obvious, and then maybe we can add on to it. So, I'll let you state the obvious. The obvious? Don't have a trading plan. <laughs> That's the obvious, you know, because without a trading plan, you're, you know, it's like trying to fish without a hook. <laughs> you know? Well, just, uh, you can have a trading a plan, but how about not following the trading plan? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what's that's that's, that's that's the risky thing, right? Yeah, I mean, either way, you know, I, well, I'll go and say either way. And the reason why I say either way, TRO, is because I've seen people who are out there and trading, in fact, you know this one particular person uh i was talking to him and when he was when i sat down with him for lunch one day and i was talking to him so okay what's your trading plan bring your trading plan and he showed up and he had no trading plan mm -hmm. you know and he was wondering why some days he had big wins and other days he had even bigger losses yeah well and that's 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 the uh that's a, a really risky thing to go and do you know um now, now your your second your your comment or a follow up to mine, you're absolutely right. It's just as risky, I guess, and that is having a trading plan and not being smart enough smart enough to actually go and use it. Or actually, smart enough is not the right word. This is some truly brilliant people out there. They have trading plans and don't follow it. Now, let's go and put it a different way. Now, it's the big D word: discipline. Not disciplined enough to go and follow it. Yeah. So, so that's probably the, the biggest, you know, the, the obvious one. You know, and then uh, I think the the now taking that off that subject and going and say, okay, what are some of the things some of the things that are not as obvious, you know, in terms of uh, risk, you know, or or risk or being very risky? I'd say the next thing is hubris. Thinking that you know you've had three, four really good days, and you think, oh, I'm invincible. In fact, I can't wait to get in front of that terminal tomorrow because I'm gonna slaughter it again. <laughs> you know. <laughs> now, of course, there is an element of need need be of uh, of having some uh, you know some confidence in what you're doing because when you have confidence in what you're doing, it it allows you to take the trade, and you know when you see the trade come up. But the thing is. Cubers can go to the next thing where, okay, this is a risky trade, but I'm so good I can get away with it. And you jump in with all your gunpowder, and then kick, and then you cause yourself some serious hurt. You know, so well, that's probably the big one for me. Okay, uh, now yeah. hold on, hold on right there because you said something that I'm sure one of the uh, listeners might not understand. You said this is a risky trade. What what? would make one trade risky and another trade not so risky see that well, that's sure. something we have to define yeah i mean when i take a trade and, and i think you you're well aware of this is that when i look look to take a trade i look for certain things to come in play before i go and pull the trigger i want condition one condition two condition three and i want all three of those things to be in my favor before i go and pull the trigger now, there are times when I'll pull the trigger on two, you know, only having two, or maybe even what's one of those conditions being there, but I'm sitting there, when I do that, I got my finger on the exit button so quick, it's not even funny, you know? But if you're not very, um, if you're not very humble in what you're doing, I think what can very easily happen is like, well, I'm invincible, and I have, yeah, I only got one of the conditions met, and I pull the trigger, you know? And when I pull the trigger, you know, and next thing you know, it's like, oh, shoot, I'm down, you know, X percent of my account because I wasn't smart enough to go and, you know, and realize that, hey, the market's going to do what the market wants to do, which is true all the time. But when you have some humility, you, you, you real, not only do you realize it, but you act upon it. I think sometimes we get prideful, you know, and. And I think that feeds into that greed thing as well. But we 
get become very very prideful and you know i know it's going to go this way because i'm you know the great <laughs> tro of the universe or whatever you know? <laughs> well you know there's another thing i thought was pretty obvious i thought you might mention it but then i thought well maybe you consider that part of your trading plan and that's trading a position size that's kind of large for your account size so maybe you've got a thousand dollar account but you're trading at the level at fifty dollars a pip or something. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you over. You know, there, there are two things you can do. You can over over trade, and you can be overextended. You know, in terms of just because yeah, I'll t I'll say this way: just because the broker is willing to extend you, you know, uh, ex all this uh, margin, which is wonderful because that's how you can make money, doesn't mean you have to use it. <laughs> Because the you know, problem with having all that that margin that they extend to you is that yeah it can make you a lot of money but it can also crush your entire account very very quickly. And that's why they do it, right? Uh, well, so, so, uh, certain brokers. I wouldn't say all brokers are that way, but I'd say yeah, there's there's a number of them that did, you know they're sitting out there and you know I'm not going to go and name any brokers. That's just uh, you know that's not our position here to do that, but. You can go out there and see that the way they set up their rules, the way they do things. You know, you're giving somebody who has never traded a day in their life, okay, and you allow them to go and set up an account for a hundred bucks, and you give them five hundred to one or a thousand. I've even seen a thousand to one margin. I mean, that you that that account is going to get wiped out before they even start. It was their account can get wiped out in the first trade because of that. You know, and that so there are unfortunately brokers that do that, you know, and so we have to go and say, hey, let's be smart about this. Just because they give me 500 to one doesn't mean I need to run a hundred dollar account doesn't mean I get to go out there and trade, you know, you know, five, five lots, you know, maybe a hundred to one, if they give me 501, that's great. But, you know, uh, with only a hundred dollars in the account, I'm trading a micro lot until I can go and build up some additional capital to go and uh, be able to continue trading. <laughs> right now let's, we've talked about, I think, all the obvious things unless you can think of something else um let's think of something that's risky that might not be so obvious well that's putting me on the spot i gotta think about this for a second <laughs> here um it, that's hard you know because for me anyway uh, i usually discover those things after i've done it <laughs> well one yeah, of so the ones is you kind of alluded to it where You've had some good days and now you think you're invincible, but I'm thinking, let's put that in a session. I think sometimes, um, you know, you strike while the iron's hot, meaning if you've had, you know, some success, maybe you keep trading. But then again, it's that it's that trade that comes after the one that um, puts you at or above your your goal. That to me, especially in the beginning, um, is is a risk that some people don't see because what will happen is that trade after the one that you hit gold that X let's call it the that that one more trade that's the one right. that can put you in the tilt meaning um, if it goes against you now instead of you being disciplined in either a just saying okay well I'll, I'll cut it I'll, I'll stop now or okay um, I'll make sure the next trade follow, you know, ticks off all the boxes, as you like to say, um, as opposed to now, maybe you just jump right back in. I got to get that money back. And then, you know, yeah. next thing you know, you've wiped out your entire day's um, wins. Now you're, you turn a winning day into a losing day or even worse. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, there was a, a following on that is that, you know, it's the type of thing where you go in and let's say you made goal and then the next thing you know, you take that trade and you lose that trade. And let's say you lose half of your goal. So you're only halfway there and then you get mad. And the next thing you know, we do what we used to call in the old days, a revenge trade. I'm just jumping in to get my money back. Right. And the next thing now, next thing you know, not only if you lost that half a day's trade or half a day's goal, you've now lost, you know, the, the, the entire amount that you're willing to risk for the day now and then sometimes i've even seen some and i've done it i'll be i'll admit it 
you know, especially in the early days, you then go and do it again. And the next thing you know, you're beyond what you're supposed to lose for the day. And, you know, and that can, that can lead into, uh, uh, into the position of, uh, you know, wiping an account out pretty quickly. You know, in fact, you, I, when you and I went and listened to a, uh, I can't remember the fellow's name, but, you know, he's one of these YouTubers that, you know, take $10,000 and turn it into a million dollars or something like that in 30 days or whatever. And he admitted that he, there was a time when he thought he was so invincible and so good that he literally went and wiped out an entire $100,000 account just by doing that. Um, and just, you know, boom, 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 and did it not across a week or two weeks. No, he did it in a day. You know, so, yeah, that's, I mean, experienced traders can do that too. So we all have to be careful with that. So um, is there anything that you can think of that might be uh, really not so obvious um, that's risky? Not really, because the thing, here's the reason I'm going to say that, and that is that, you know, we have, we know what all the boundaries are, you know, we know what they all are. And the thing is, we just need to stay within, you know, like to say, I say it all the time. We've got to stay within the banks and the rules, you know? And the problem is we introduce risk because when we go outside those banks, now there are reasons to go outside the banks from time to time, because that's where opportunity sits. You know, every time you pull the trigger, it's a risk. And maybe maybe that's a, that's one that we don't foresee or it's something that we don't see. Even if you got everything in place, just pulling the trigger is a risk. It's an, and and it, it that's just a reality. And so you got to go and realize that just, be, you know, every time you pull that trigger, it's a risk. And so you need to go and figure out and follow up with the idea of, okay, how am I going to minimize this risk? You know, I, I find myself doing that as soon as I pull the trigger, okay? Even if the trade goes in my direction, here's what's going through my mind. And that is, okay, how do I go and preserve my capital even while it's going in my direction? You know, and I, I tend to go and look at every trade that way. I'm constantly thinking, you know, I'm in the trade. Okay, if this goes against me, what am I going to do? Where am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? You know, and... I think that that's, that's probably a, a, a little known risk that we need to go and uh, take care of it. For me, mitigating it is just, you know, this is, this is a game that, you know, you got to be thinking, you know, you got to be constantly thinking about what you're doing. Well, I mean, do you, when you say thinking now, isn't it more evaluating the situation yeah. because you already know you're not like thinking to me is when you're uh creating things out of thin air. You're not following a plan. You're, you're trying to basically do a seat of the pants trade where, um, okay, I think it's going to do this. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll stay corrected on that. Yeah. That's a better way of saying it. You're not thinking about it. What you're doing is you're constantly going and evaluating where you're at, why you're at there. Uh, not why you're at there, but where you're at and how are you going to go and preserve your capital, you know, preserve the trade to the best of your ability. And, and why, how do you do that? Well, you go into the, you go into it with a plan in the first place. You know, it's sort of like you don't go to the battlefield without knowing what you're going to do. Yeah. You know? And when a, when a general puts together a plan to go into war, you know, the reality is he doesn't just go and say, and put a plan in place for, if things go all right, he also puts a plan in for when things don't go right, you know? Yeah. What do I, and that's what we have to do. Yeah, like um, putting in a plan in when, uh, uh, say, it's uh, the fastest 15 minutes trading is just about over, like right now. Um, <laughs> well, I had one more um, to add to it, but I guess we'll have to do that tomorrow and just, I'll just throw it out there. You know, I mentioned about that one more trade. Well, you know, wanting one more pip is, it can be very risky too, but we'll expand on that tomorrow because when you sit down at your trading terminal, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So fellow traders go out there and drain the banks. This is a rumpled one over and out.